Uh, on Tuesday the 26th, I'll call this meeting to order. And I will begin with public input uh, from members of the public on anything not on the agenda. Seeing and hearing nothing. Um, chairman's comments, I just have a couple of very quick things on this meeting before Thanksgiving. Um, first of all, and it's not in my materials, but of course the gobbler is this Thursday, Thanksgiving. Um, I don't know the exact time, but it's over at Bo's very early in the morning. Uh, be there, either run it. It's always a lot of fun. Um, and if you can, show up and sure that they need some help. I think it usually starts at 8. At 8? Yeah. So, and then people showing up there at 6.30. So, so uh, please keep that in mind. What's the weather supposed to be? Uh, pretty good. Pretty good weather. Uh, no reason not to show up. Possibility of a little rain in the morning <laughs> on, on Thanksgiving. I'd like but, to be there by morning. <laughs> um, also, the annual tree lighting uh, is slated to be Saturday, December 7th, so it's not this Saturday, but the Saturday after that at 7 p.m. at the Lower Common. I passed by there today. It looks possible to do a tree lighting there, and it'll only get better between now and December 7th, so um, that ought to be pretty good. There's a rain date of the next weekend, uh, but let's keep our fingers crossed and then we don't need that. And finally, uh, there will be a public forum on Thursday, December 12th at 7 p.m. Um, most likely at, oh, I, I'm sorry, at the Hale School Auditorium uh, with Mass DEP on the PFAS issue. Um, thanks to Bill and the Board of Health for, and to Kate Hogan for arranging to get Mass DEP to come here and uh, do a public forum. They will be available to, they'll be summarizing the issue and what's going on and they'll be available to answer questions. So everybody worked pretty hard to get the DEP to come here. Let's have a good turnout and this is your chance to get some authoritative information. Mr. Hawks, we were not expecting you. Surprise. <laughs> um, Always a pleasure to see you though. And, um, we have some minutes, and we have two sets of minutes, one from our last meeting of November 12th. Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> I took the occasion to do some rather voluminous corrections, taking a page from my, my colleague. Okay. Might, might I volunteer? to go through them, because I think it may address any, ch any changes that might follow, or certainly not precluding any others. Okay, can you do it quickly, or should we just pass over them? Because I, I frankly didn't have anything other than typos. Um, on November, go ahead, what are they? No, uh, Maureen's not here. Yeah. They, I, I have corrections on every single page of the, of the last meeting. Um, so I would suggest maybe hold off on those till the next meeting. All right, we'll do that. And on the second one, I'm just going to note as a matter of, <coughs> not to correct it tonight, but I, I can't resist this one. Um, I will correct this at the next meeting. On second paragraph, April 24, misplaced modifiers can be amusing. Uh, it, it, it reads presently, uh, he, G.H., mentioned that the cemetery department would hold a meeting on May 2nd, uh, 12.30, to discuss green burials at town hall. I think that probably requires a little bit of... Okay. Um, other comments on the, me on the minutes of April 24th? Um, I was going to suggest that in the very first paragraph, where Brian apparently says he said that the Best Buddies ride would take place this weekend. I was just taking that out. I know that that takes place the first weekend in June, so I would have to be wrong. It doesn't add any substance, so I'm going to ask Maureen to take that out. Does anybody else have anything else on yes. the minutes of April 24th? Let's start with Courtney. Well, I wasn't here, so well, I you do were not. not. Tom, do you have anything? Nope. April 24th. Would, Don. Uh, would you just uh, put Town Hall Follow, following, so we hold a meeting at Town Hall. Uh, where's this, Don? Last line. Of the, okay. of the, the chair meeting. comments. So we would hold a meeting at Town Hall May 2, 
to discuss green burials. Sure. Right. That's it. Sure. Okay, I'll give those comments to and Maureen. I will take it on myself, Mr. Chairman, to meet with Maureen prior to our next meeting. And perhaps many of these can be addressed. And I think um, Tom and I both have comments, perhaps less than yours, so we'll, we'll all give our comments to Maureen. Okay. Okay. That's fine. Thank all you. All right. Do I have a motion on April, the minutes of April 24th as amended? I'll make a motion. We accept the minutes of April 24th, 2018 as amended. Second. Motion made the second to approve the minutes of April 24th, uh, 2018 as amended. Please, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 <coughs> Opposed? Abstentions? Uh, aye. Uh, and that is one. So you're um, doing your duty as clerk. Thank you very much. But and by the way, I, I did see the humor after I reread it on what Don was saying about yes. <coughs> burying people at town halls. <laughs> <Burying people's laughs> town. Well, unless we were going to designate the Chase out back for burials. Has everyone had a chance to take a look at correspondence? Does anybody see anything they want on a future agenda? No. Okay. Um, and that brings us to our first substantive item, which is an update on the fall orchard season from Liz Painter, the chair of the Agricultural Commission. Liz, do you want to join us? I think you know everybody. I do. Nice to see everybody. We'll do our usual we'll stand up and, and treat you like nice. uh, okay. a visiting dignitary. Wow, I like this. This is great. Nice to see you. Hi. Nice to see you. So Liz and I were talking, and um, we have, at least in the past years, we've spent so much time talking about um, problems caused by the, <laughs> the apple season. Uh, we haven't done that in a few years. The traffic situation has kind of calmed down, and um, I think everybody's kind of got a plan. Um, but it seemed like a good opportunity to actually talk about the good news and how things went from a business perspective. Um, so I asked Liz to attend. and. Uh, we're all ears. It's good. Yeah, um, 2019 was a really good year. I think for all three of us, you know, the, the main orchards, uh, we all had good crops. The weather was good. You know, it, it rained a little in the end, but that's to be expected. Um, we had good crowds. I think it was nothing out of control for anybody. I don't think anybody had any major accidents, um, no huge fire instances or anything. So from that perspective, it was really good. We didn't see a huge increase in business. Um, we haven't in the past three or four years, probably. I think we've plateaued. Um, I don't know why that is. We're you know, looking at everything, but it's, it's a good thing. I think we have as much as we can handle right now anyway, and, and it's good. We didn't have any complaints from customers this year, for one of the first years ever. <laughs> so, and that's because the crop is so good. You know, when we have a good crop, it all works out. You know, yeah. and when we have problems, we don't. Um, we were able to do a couple things this year. We were able to employ three special needs uh, adults in our operation. That's something we've been trying to do for a long time. We finally have a job for them. And it was really rewarding. One of them was a 16-year-old kid who just was dying to work. And really? we were a little worried about it because we weren't sure, but he fit in perfectly and he's, you know, I think he'll be with us forever. Uh, Nick Giannavazzi, I don't know if you know him, he's worked Nick. for us for six oh. or seven years. He wants to work for us full time, you know, but he works all the time for us. And he is, you know, he's a real bright spot. So that's something we've been working toward and I think we're finally there. We also increased our special needs um, school groups. We've been trying to get more and more kids um, to come out and pick apples with their, you know, caseworkers. And, and that's, we've doubled the number of kids that have come out in that. So it's two areas we've been working on. Um, we also have, uh, We've gone into the new variety business. We were trying to increase the varieties. When we bought the farm, there were 23 varieties. We have over 80 right now. And that seems to be <coughs> getting people's attention. I think people want that, you know, and they're very excited about it. My husband's really excited about it. We've gone off into the heirlooms for a while. We have some different things, and, um, and it's been fun. We have 80 apples. varieties of apples. We started with 2,000 trees. We have 15,000 right now. So we've, we've really added you know, just a lot of interesting <coughs> things, and people have been responsive, you know, and I think, and the other orchards are doing the same thing. Everybody's trying to keep the interest in the apples, you know, and make it an interesting experience. So, so you know, what you hear colloquially, it's the first time I've ever said that word, and I stumbled <laughs> over it, um, 
is that orchards are really into agritainment. Mm -hmm. And you know that's where the big improvements are. And I saw you know you've made modest inroads there, but really you're saying that your big movements forward have been on the actual agriculture. Side. We've had to do both. Absolutely, we can't just grow apples. We hear that loud and clear. Everybody wants to spend the day. They want all kinds of stuff, right. you know. And we've we've had to go forward with both. We added a pumpkin and bounce this year, you know, and it was a killer. It's a big plastic giant pumpkin that the kids can bounce in. And we absolutely had to do it, you know, because people won't come if we don't have those kinds of things. We've stayed away from anything that's mechanized. Like all of our entertainment things are hay mountains. We have pedal tractors the kids can play on. We're trying to get them to move, you know, and to, to do that kind of thing versus some sort of ride or train. And, and but now we have really tried to, um, just add to the interest in apples. And we, we planted the tree that the apple fell off of Isaac Newton's, you know, on his head, you know, the flower of Kent. Ted's got uh, Thomas Jefferson's favorite apple, you know, so he's, we've really tried to make it an interesting experience. Um, and people want the new varieties. So this is our Evercrisp. This was, um, this is the latest and greatest. And you have to, I brought one for everybody. Oh, oh that's um, cool. cool. I know, <laughs> they're a Honeycrisp Fuji Cross. And, you know, Honeycrisp is the craze. It's, we yeah. get people starting to call the day we open till the day we close. Please, we need Honeycrisp. Mm -hmm. And we're out, you know, we ran right. out, you know, we tried. And we've, we've added every year, but, um, so this is the post Honeycrisp apple, it's an Evercrisp. Wow. And this it's was picked. How recently is that? It's been, been available as a cross. So we, <laughs> it's, we planted it last year, this was our first crop. And Tugas has it, yeah, so in the last couple of years, uh, Mo Tugas has grown in the last like four or five years, and he's been very successful with it. But you know, they're hard to find, and this was picked a month ago, has not been in cold storage, and it's awesome. I mean, it is crunchy, and it's got a really good flavor, it's a great keeper. We had people knocking on the door for this apple, you know, so it's... It's great. People are interested. That's you know? true. I know. And that so might be my new, um, I know. <laughs> That's why I brought everybody a never Chris. Yeah, because they're just and and it's um you know large I know. And they and they keep they'll keep. So we're experimenting. We're gonna put them out and see how long they'll last, you know, because the honey crisp will last forever. But um but they're a really fun apple and um, you know, my husband is just really committed to it not just being an entertainment business right. it's got to be because we won't last if it is there's more exciting things to do you know right. so um, this is how we've kind of combated with that and I know honeypot has invested a lot in their tall spindles they're trying to do new varieties Carver Hill we've talked to them about it everybody's sort of you know trying to do this so that we don't just turn into amusement parks you know so so it sounds like the business is healthy I believe it is, you know, I mean, long term, I have no idea. I still feel like we're running a dinosaur, but I feel like, you know, there's so. a lot of interest. We yeah. get a lot of positive feedback from people. You know, we get a lot of people who complain always, but the more people are saying thank you than they have before. You know, they appreciate what we're doing. I mean, I have a unique perspective on your parking lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it was full. Saturdays and Sundays, mm -hmm. and even days during the week, because now I'm home a bit mm -hmm. more during the week, and it was full a lot. Mm -hmm. um, now I don't, I think during the week, I don't know if you were using the satellite parking, but I think on the weekends you were. A little, yeah. A little, yeah. yeah. We've got it down though. We didn't have a parking problem this year, and I think Honeypot's got the same thing. We have these moving parking lots, yeah. so there's just this constant revolving. Yeah, no, your traffic flow looked good. It's a good traffic flow, you know. So I think I think it worked. And again, I think we have enough business. It's kind of where, where we need to be, you know. My home we office there. faces on your parking lot, so when I'm wasting time, that's what I. You watch the cars go. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> fell in the brook this year. That was a really good thing. Yeah. So, <laughs> so it's all them. positive. I, I saw you right at the edge. Yes, it's terrifying, <laughs> especially the school buses. They go really close, and they they think they know everything because they're from the city. They're like, we know how to drive, you know. And a couple of them have ended up right in the brook, you know. So we've had to pull them out with bulldozers. But. Courtney, any, any questions, comments? No. Thank you for growing apples. <laughs> Thank you. Um, one of the things I was to go along with, uh, you know, um, you're bringing people back. My daughter, one of her, Katie, more, love her. yeah, Katie, and my other daughter Megan, Megan who's yeah. been in Florida for five years now, 
She was up uh, end of September. Nice. And she insisted that the one of the first things she do was go up and uh, go apple picking. So, and we employ and over 60 high school kids a season, part time. We have the entire town of Stowe working for us, you know. I mean, right. and it's and they work four hour shifts. It's not a big deal, but it's a great first job. We have five full time employees during the fall. You know, all live in Stowe, so we are we are making an impact that way. We gave 10 bushels of apples to St. Bridget's. We gave, I think, 40 bushels to First Parish Church for their pie fundraiser. You know, we're constantly trying to give and be part of the community as well, you know, do things. Whenever anybody asks, we say yes, you know, so. Yeah. But, we, you know, we have, um, we do make a contribution that way as well. We do have a lot of people work for us, you know, so. That sounds terrific, Don. A couple of comments. Sure. Kudos. Nick is one of the I finest young men I have ever met. I love him. I absolutely uh, I love worked him. with his dad building sets when he and my daughter mm -hmm. were classmates at Neshoba mm -hmm. and they were in involved. I had nothing but praise for him. He is going far in this world. And thank you for making that outreach. Number two, Fuji apples, which are crossed with this, are enormous. <laughs> they are. I have a little bit of passing knowledge, not just looking at parking lots. I drove a hay wagon. Oh. At Honey wow. Pot for 12 years. Nice. And in that course, I think when I started, Andrew, because it's obviously a bigger parcel, much yes. bigger parcel yeah. than yours, uh, so to over 200 acres. At the time when I started working there, they had something like 30,000 trees. Mm -hmm. He's gone to the miniature trees now, and he planted 10,000 of them one year because they only take up three feet between mm -hmm. trees, and the, and, they, and and they don't grow any taller than. A, six feet high yeah. and you can, so you might get 12 apples from a tree that mm -hmm. one tree but you can by acreage you can multiply it's tremendously yeah. when I started work there they had something like 30 varieties of apples I'm not saying it's a competition no it's great we're all but because he there. has so much more space yeah. and peaches and, and everything mm -hmm. else it's just a wonderful part of the economy and the draw of this town we always hear it's like a complaint from some people who say we are so limited by structural deficiencies in our tax classification, but this is, all we have is apples and, and golf courses. But that certainly that di diminishes, and it, it diminishes tremendously the value I see in, in what you're doing and keeping it going. I felt a proprietary interest when I worked there. Mm -hmm. it, I felt it was my mm -hmm. orchard. We have I a lived a mile up the street. Mm -hmm. I felt in some small way I was doing something that would keep that alive. And I think all of your employees get that employee, that feeling as well. Mm -hmm. That has grown like topsy. Mm -hmm. uh, there used to be 80 kids a, a week working there. I, mm -hmm. bet it's, I bet it's closer to 200. I bet, yeah. Between the mazes and the hay wagons and the this and the that. Yeah, it's, it's a phenomenal just, operation. But it is phenomenal. all of it, all three, it, it's just so, so, such a wonderful part of this town. Thank you, I appreciate that. Because we do get our fair share of complaints, but more, less, you know, the, the better we are, the less we get. <laughs> so um, I will say with AdCom, um, we are, I am moving forward with that. We did die when Dwight left us. You know, there was no one to pick it up. I tried and I had kids and all that, but my daughter's in college, my son's driving, so now I can do it. <laughs> so I, and I'm gonna start with just sending letters. Dwight did the same thing to try to garner interest among the farms. He, we never had more than three or four people. We ne were never successful at holding meetings, um, but you know we'll try. And I think we just appointed somebody new. Elena, yeah, yeah from yeah, Small Farm. She's pretty. She's and, interested, right. so that's she, great. She seems very enthusiastic. Hey, we all have stuff. I have a little nonprofit that I'm on the board of. We all have things that, from time to time, are not the number one priority. Don't worry about it. Yeah, I wanted um, I wanted us to have that in case something comes up. But so yeah. far, we've been so fortunate that we haven't had big issues. You know that we're very happy to be under the radar and just meet once a year. And if you guys need us, we'll be there. But you know, I don't think it'll ever be a big a big thing in in our town. I mean, I think we always wanted. I think we really should keep lines of communication open mm -hmm. about good and bad. Um, you know, what do you need from the town government? And I remember asking Dwight that when I first ran from first selectman mm -hmm. and the answer was some variation on stand of our way yeah which is fine which is exactly um, right yeah, yeah. Which, is, which is fine yeah. um but i do think you know 
as Don said, we're all invested in this business. Mm -hmm. Not financially as you are, but we all have a stake mm -hmm. in it. Mm -hmm. um, so let's let's keep these lines of communication going on. And by the way, you're very good at this update. So I know you're kind of reluctant when it comes to public speaking. <laughs> Too bad. You're on the hook. I know. I promise I'll be better. It's <laughs> been a really, my daughter is, you know, getting kids grown up is hard. <laughs> but yes. they're finally there. So, so I can, I can they do that. They keep coming back. Though. I know. So stop Just one technical clarification, if I might, Mr. Chairman. Sure. Every apple that I was associated with for my 12 years immediately put into refrigeration. Why yeah. is it that this particular does We're experimenting with them. So yeah, because, we, well, we, um, we turned our refrigeration off the day that we closed, which was on November 4th. And um, so then we said, well, these will go bad, you know, but we just, we were trying to see how good they are. They're supposed to last forever and without refrigeration. Mm -hmm. We, Kathy and I so. do not refrigerate our apples. And um, those honey crisp are still crisp, aren't they? Yes. I mean, they are. We make it, I mean, occasionally I'll buy a half pack and if I'm not taking one every day, I'll get like three or four <laughs> at the end that yeah. aren't good. No, I always make it through. We don't refrigerate them. The late Richard Martin used to, used to come and lecture the school kids. They had 85 school buses in their lot one time, one, oh one day gosh. when I was there. Oh, oh my gosh. So we've had four. Here. We were in crisis. Yeah. <laughs> Rich, Richard, Richard was son of the, grand, of the founder of Honeypot. Uh, and his picture is up in the store, and they looked exactly alike. Yeah, it it's amazing. Just, but he used to have a speech about, don't forget to refrigerate your apples. Mm -hmm. They are like eggs. You've got to treat them like eggs. If you leave eggs out, blah, 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 and, and you have to treat them in the same way. Do not bruise them. Do not drop them into the bag. He lived apples, and I think you all do. Yeah, you have to. Yeah, you really do. All, all right, right so we should probably move on. Thank you so <laughs> much for bringing <laughs> apples. Yes. Yes. So, <laughs> so few people have gotten the thing. Well, I was going to bring apple crisp with the ice cream, and I'm like, these, oh, that might get messy, so <laughs> I'd pass right. on that one. These are dense <laughs> just by holding it. Yeah, it's, it's so they were picked, feel. you know, a month ago, haven't been refrigerated, so in there's Ever still, crisp? Ever crisp. For it's the, the, the new latest and greatest. Do you still have them in stock? No, no, yeah, we and we, you know, we no, close. We so, yeah, we're done for yeah. the year. <laughs> but they'll be back. They'll Thank, be back you so Thank you so much. You're welcome. So sure. next year, maybe apple crisp with ice. Thanks, Liz. <laughs> <laughs> you can get kudos for taking that home. I was going to say, it's not going to make it to ours. It's not going to make it that yeah, it's early enough. Um, this is going with my lunch tomorrow. It's perfect. Um, okay, we have a few appointments we need. Well, actually, we have one appointment to do of a highway employee. Mr. Town Administrator, you want to say a few words about this? About Jonathan, <laughs> Jonathan Baharel? He's, he's got a mouthful of apples at the moment. Oh, are you addressing it to me? Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> well, okay. I, I knew this was going to start. No, I'll, <laughs> what was the question? I'll give you, forget it. It's, it's that kind of meeting. Um, you all have before you the recommendation from Brian yeah. Hatchie, Acting Superintendent of Streets, to um, hire Jonathan Baharo um, as a highway grounds worker. Uh, Labor. Labor. We have the job posting. Any discussion? Well, he's enjoying uh, his apple. I was t very impressed with this applicant. He yes. lives in Stowe. He's been a call firefighter for two years. I mean, what, what? This is going back to the roots of call firefighting. I mean, and and we always say we have a town employees that don't live in town. This is an example of best of both worlds. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and you'll stay on the fire department. And he yes. Can, he can run away. From I noticed. Paving I, I noticed all his references. One of them is Joseph Landry, position yeah. boss. <laughs> <laughs> do I do I have a motion? So moved. With second. The motion has been made and seconded to appoint Jonathan Baharo as. A uh, highway grounds worker laborer for the highway department. Further discussion? Seeing, hearing none, all those in favor, see if I say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. And that is unanimous. Good choice. Um, we are going to pass over the item about disposing of surplus rifles from the police department. There's some question whether the uh, Veterans Graves Committee had some role in their origination and 
we want to check with them first before we do that whether they have any plan for them there's only two members of that committee so we want to check with both of them before we move on on that so i'm going to table that until most likely our next meeting um, next we have two items that are sort of annual uh, license renewals so i had a question for maureen but i obviously can't ask her um, I want to make sure that all of these applicants have sent in their materials to renew. She said we had sent stuff out, but she didn't say we had gotten anything back. I can't answer that. Yeah. So I think what we should do is renew these licenses on the assumption or conditional upon that the applicants have have sent us the required paperwork to renew their licenses. And, it, it, and by implication, if that is not the case, they will come back before us yes. at some future time. Yes. I would, I would make that motion if you can. Um, I, I think we need a mo I think you need to read. Yes, but with that understanding. Yes. So could I get a motion on the, actually let's have Courtney do it. I, I, that's our understanding. She's the official motion person. She's also uh, the minute taker. Ms. Freysha, do you have a motion? Uh, Mr. Chairman, Chairman, I move to renew the town's common victualler licenses for the following businesses for 2020, um, conditional on their having made full application as appropriate. Dunkin' Donuts at Stowe Golf Station, 626 Great Road. Stowe Cafe at 118 Great Road. Delta Epsilon Incorporated DBA Stowe House of Pizza at 156 Great Road. Stowe LLC DBA Dunkin' Donuts at Stowe Shopping Plaza 117 Great Road. Emma's Cafe at 117 Great Road. And that's it. Second. Motion is made and seconded to renew the 2020 common victual licenses conditioned on the applicants submitting all required paperwork for renewal. Um, further discussion. Seeing, hearing, not all in favor, please see if I may say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. These do require signature tonight. Yep. Opposed, nay. Or, or, or should we hold off on signature to make sure that they might, one of these might fall through the cracks? Let's hold off. Okay. Thank you. Okay. You don't need to, but I mean, she just will make sure, sure that, that they, they don't get issued. We can sign them if they don't get them. Right. If they won't get them, stay right there. And that will get us. Marlene's usually pretty good about that anyway to make sure that they've. I was almost going to say that, you know, she generally wouldn't put them on the list if they hadn't. It's usually a prerequisite. Yeah. Something. But I wouldn't mean one. I wouldn't slip by. But I think so. I just wanted to be sure. That's, that's separate. separate motion. Yes. Yeah. yeah. No, but they're all individual. They all have to be Here, signed. you start. And I'll hold on to these. Thank you. Would you prefer somebody else make the motion since you're taking notes? Um, Tom can do it. Okay. Sure, Tom can do it. Do you Tom? Want Tom? Tom, you're up. I, I need a motion on the class two used car dealer licenses. Mr. Chairman. Yes. I move <laughs> to renew the town's class two licenses for the following businesses subject to the proper completion of all the pay, uh, appropriate paperwork and submission to the selections office. Patterson Auto Body, 18 Great Road. Import Export of Boston, 8 Whitman Street. Great Road Fuels, 368 Great Road. Richard Presty, Chapel Partners, Inc., 102 Great Road. BGL Automotive, DBA, Hudson Road Auto, 383 Great Road. Dennis Paul Scafidi, uh, Infinite Detail and Accessories, 102 Great Road. P Cars, 370 Hudson Road. I need a second. Second. Motion made and seconded to renew Class two used car dealer licenses um, conditioned on submitting all appropriate paperwork for license renewal. Further discussion? Seeing hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. And that's unanimous. And we are now going to take a little break and finish up this signing. And none of us is capable of doing two things at the same time. We need music to fill in the blanks. Could Stowe TV arrange for that? The way they do CNN? Or not CNN. No. I 
I know it's a slower process tonight because Mr. Burke's uh, signature, which is very flamboyant, is missing. I mean, the signing will take a shorter time? Yeah. <laughs> no. Mm -hmm. Look, you, I'm I saying, you watch, your, watch your colleague to your left and how long it takes him to sign. They teach them that in law school, I believe. Very, very slow signature. There's a certain air of holiday spirit that you might notice in the air tonight. You're missing your nameplate. I wonder where it went. It was here earlier. Oh, I put all the ones that you felt for the be. selectmen that I didn't think were attending up back up in the desk. I don't take it as a slide. I, I didn't think Don was going to be here today. What if we just get a piece of paper and tape put something on it? <laughs> So that everybody knows. Just put it on his <laughs> put, put right on before it. No, <laughs> oh, no, no. It won't be able to be seen on the camera. No, I think I had mentioned originally I thought I would be away, but then corrected it, but I'm here. As you will shortly find out. All right. Um, as we finish that up, we can go to the next item. Uh, selectmen versus select board designation. Um, when I was researching uh, various liquor rules from our neighbors, uh, I realized, and I sort of knew it already, that many of our neighbors have made the transition from being a board of selectmen to a select board. And I thought it might be a good chance just to talk about it. Um, and actually, I think I'm going to start with Ms. Frasia as the most uh, likely person on the board at this point to care. Um, do you have any particular thoughts on this? Well, my thoughts are simple. I um, don't feel the need to change the name of our board and um, do a lot of administrative work around that. Um, because I um, was speaking to the town clerk one day and um, she really summed it up for me. Um, by changing the name, by calling me a select woman, for instance, it points out that I'm different. And um, I don't mind being different, but I don't think it <laughs> needs attention drawn to it. I'm six feet tall and here I am. <laughs> so um, <laughs> I. Um, I just feel like it's an honor to be a selectman and I don't need to be called anything different. It's part of uh, I just I just think it's it's part of the way, the nomenclature of you know town okay, offices that so um, I'm happy the way it is. Um, any other thoughts from members of the board? I have my own thoughts on it. Um, Bear with me, this will be short polemic. Uh, I feel very strongly about this, and I think perhaps, and this is the only time in the entire in, uh, my tenure on the board I, I brought up this name. A certain member of my family in earlier years and I were both selectmen. He was a selectman of the town of Braintree. His name was John Adams. Um, I have a particularly historic view, and I'm going to back it up with two legal views. Historical first. When these colonies were established long before the de Declaration of Independence, for some reason, this archaic, now seeming archaic term, was created. Board of Select Men. By the way, did you know in 1767 there were five members of this board? which I found fascinating. I found that out at the Alexander Hamilton presentation. George Schultz was a selectman in this town, former Secretary of State. I think we all have a sense of history that surrounds us. And, and that, without any of the other points, and brief points I'm going to make, I feel very strongly that we are select men with no offense to any gender. Legal points, a little research. I'm quoting, and this is, since I'm referring to a document in this meeting, I'd like to become part of the public record of the meeting. 
ago. Town of Stowe Charter, Article 3, Elected Officials, Section 3-1, General Provisions, Paragraph A. The town offices to be filled by ballot shall be a board of select men, emphasis added, in the town charter. Second and last point, Mass General Laws, Chapter 41, Section 11, which deals with filling vacancies in town offices. Quotes in relevant part. If a vacancy occurs in any town office other than the office of select man, emphasis added, dot, 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 the select men, plural, shall in writing appoint, appoint a person to fill such vacancy. I would suggest that other communities might have gotten around the charter provision, as many town of Grafton and many others have, but I suggest that it's in the Mass General Laws they have violated that. So I would say, what's Tom, going on? Thank you. I, I think that uh, leaving it as the Board of Selectmen is historically accurate, and I, I don't think it denigrates anybody. Um, it's, you know, I consider it Courtney appear. I have considered any other uh, woman that was on the Board of Selectmen appear with you know no no thoughts of uh, you know there that uh, you know there was anything wrong with that that they were a member of the board of selectmen female but member of the board of selectmen I I don't see any need to change it so I also don't see any need to change it but I find a lot of these arguments to be a little pointless. Um, of course it says selectmen. All this stuff was written in the 1600s, 1700s, or even 30 years ago. Who cares? Um, if there ever comes a time when someone on the board of selectmen is offended by it, or townspeople are offended by it, I am not hearing that right now, but if there ever comes a time, those things can change, and we could change. There's nothing preventing us from changing, other than right now, not really he hearing that anybody wants to. That makes a difference to me. 283 places that it appears in the charter, so what? We could tomorrow decide to call ourselves something different and change our letterhead. Um, the bylaws could be amended with a two-line thing that says, wherever selectmen appears, it shall be replaced by a select board. So what? The trend is towards select board. I don't particularly want to do it right now, but I want to make clear that as long as I'm chair, You'll go on the agenda anytime anybody wants it to. And we'll talk about it. I would just underscore my comments by the following. As long as I am a registered voter of this town, I will strongly oppose such That's change. fine. That's fine. But the trend is otherwise. Thank um, you. But I just want to, you know, this, as long as I'm in the chair, we're happy to talk about it if someone on the board wants to. Um, my we'll colleague, just our missing that. colleague might have other thoughts tonight. Well, yeah, but even so, I mean, he, that doesn't matter. Um, I mean, I think th there's nothing. Oh, are you saying he may want to change it? He I, might want to. He or, might. He might want to opine at some length right. on the subject. But I guess I'm saying if there was a feeling toward changing it, I'm not particularly persuaded by. Good. words and documents um, I'm more strange talk from a lawyer but <laughs> well because um, the substance is more important and the perception okay. so Set my piece. Um, but I'm good with it the way it is because there seems to be no movement toward changing it to anything else um, and now we can go on to oh a very brief discussion about the town ministry research process um, so at our last meeting, I gave you all a timeline. Uh, we're still sticking to the timeline. And right now, we are applications to be on the screening committee started to be accepted on November 13th. Um, if you look in the correspondence, we have a few applications right now. Um, kind of hoping we get more. Um, you know, we've made all these provisions for what if we have more than 15 applicants. Um, we don't have anywhere close to 15 applicants right now. 
Um, so if anybody out there is thinking about applying, please do. Um, the only thing I wanted to mention, we've talked uh, at the working group and I think at the Board of Selectmen about the desirability to have some kind of employee representation on the screening committee. Um, I don't think we are willing to designate one of our two spots to, for a town employee. I don't think the moder I don't know what the moderator is going to do. Um, but I think we all recognize that the employees have a particular stake in who the, town, the next town administrator is. There is an all staff meeting this coming Tuesday. And um, Dave Walmer at the moderator and I were going to attend that meeting and try to summarize the fairly complicated process for selecting a new town administrator and kind of summarize where we are in the whole thing. Um, you know, some employees have told me there's, and it makes sense, not everybody understands the screening <laughs> committee, the six months, that it, it, it is a little unusual. So I'm going to go and try to explain that to everyone, yeah, if, if everyone's good with that. I would echo sure. the need for that. I okay. have had comments from right. several people saying, what, what is the difference between and what's the charter? And it's so, yes, please do. Yeah, um, okay, and I don't, you know, I, I will get questions probably about what we're thinking. And obviously I can't speak for the whole board. I will try, I mean, I'll share my own thoughts and I'll make clear what I'm thinking. Um, and that's just me. Um, but I will try, obviously I'll be careful about, I, I can't bind the board to anything, I know that, and I think everybody else does too. So, do you want to add anything? Or did I hit the high points? From the beginning, I felt strongly that the interests and needs of the employees are to be considered, perhaps even directly represented on the Committee of Five, because there is no group that will be any more significantly impacted than the employees. And I think part of the governing culture we have here, which I think on the whole is very positive, in fact, many of the questionnaires that were submitted during this process with the Collins Institute, most employees expressed their satisfaction, in fact, pleasure with that relationship. And so I think it's critical that that continue with the next person. And so whether there's an employee one or more employees who are eligible apply for membership on the screening committee and one of the five being chosen for that or somehow through the process their interest and needs get incorporated in the discussion and the deliberations of the committee through some invite irrespective of how it occurs i think it's important that it does occur so I'm encouraged by this effort by the employees to perhaps organize, um, to get their interest and needs identified and defined and represented so, so strongly support yeah, for discussion. Okay. This um, is just informational, doesn't require a vote anyway. No, you know, I'm feeling very, I think we're all feeling, when we talk about something in this working group, we're feeling very, um, Constraint. I, mean, I feel like we have to share everything with the full board of selectmen. We're even sending minutes to the newspaper. We're, we're very, I don't know, we're very aware. But this is a working group as opposed to a public meeting. Yeah. O open meeting. Of yeah. But, you know, just want to make sure. If I go to a meeting to talk about this thing, I want to make sure the whole mm -hmm. board knows that I'm going. No, appreciate you doing that. And the thing is, Jim, I think. We have a lot of respect for you, and I, I definitely know you know your limits. You're not going to bind the board, and I just have a lot of respect for you, and I trust you to do the right thing. I appreciate so. that, and while we're to be there, keep you on a short leash right. anyway. So, <laughs> and Bill will kick you under the cave. Then we're already right. 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 Between all, I'll be in the I'll be in the next room in case the volume in there. <laughs> Um, okay, so uh, the last thing of any substance I guess we have is the town administrator's report. Well, my 
my glasses. This I thought time. you covered. So the first one was covered with delaying right. any processing of um, declaring surplus the uh, Springfield rifles that the PD have had in their attic for many years. Um, we'll be back to it. I am meeting with <coughs> Stephen Nadeau, who's our new superintendent of highway, tomorrow morning. We've met several times, of course, there's an agreement. Uh, he'll start on the second, so we're just going to chat. Might even bring him over there, might bring Brian over, just, you know, so that it sets it up on the first day that, you know, there's some indica leading indication that he's going to show up for work and who he is and the rest of it. I've talked so, to Brian. So Brian doesn't throw, throw, throw him out. <laughs> you. Hey, you don't belong in here. Hey, do you have a, do you have a, do you have a dump pass here? <laughs> um, and I'm excited about him starting. Uh, the more I speak with him and the more I know of him, I think we, we made a, a spot on choice there. Can I say something? Um, I've heard from several people how lucky we are to have him coming on board. Can we, um, I'll try and remember to send Maureen an email. At our next meeting, can we meet him? Well, that's part of the oh. last thing I was going to say is that okay. in my activity report, I suggested that we'll yeah. have a meet and greet on the, um, at the first meeting in January. I'm sorry, I read it on the train. It may not have sunk in. But yes, I agree with you. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, is uh, any, any chance that that might be moved up if we don't have a heavy agenda? Would it could it be done next meeting? That's what we're. Yeah, doing. the first. That is, yeah, that's, that's, that's another. We have another meeting in December. December 10th. Huh? That's I know. I'm, I'm saying the first. The oh, next meeting. The, no, you said January. You, no, you said the first meeting in January. I did. Yes. That's what I said. No, you, meant you, you, December. Meant, you meant the first December. 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 Okay, okay December. December. thank you. Our well, next meeting. <coughs> Our next meeting. Thank My you. apologies. I know what I meant to ask. I asked my dad, could we make sure Brian attends? Because I think part of what we'd like to do also is thank Brian for bridging the gap and stepping up. I mm -hmm. um, wanted to let you know that the water line over at the fire station has been um, replaced. It's, uh, it was a successful replacement and water is on uh, okay. there. Crossed under the street, across Crescent Street to the other side to replace it. From the, we valved it off. It was valved off in two places. It was trying to identify exactly where it was leaking. The leaks kept, there were multiple and they kept moving. So we, we dragged it all the way back across the street for a new line and valved it off on either side. So you can limit if there happens to be a future leak. And, uh, and I just. You didn't have to dig up 117 to do it. No, you go under it. And it was 117. Is, is Crescent, a, we went under Crescent Street. Or something through there? Yeah, you just go underneath. Oh, thank you. I know, not being an engineering type. Well, no, you would have noticed if we'd had to dig yeah. up. <laughs>
it, it, that they'll idea. give an update. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. That's, That's it. it for me. All right. Um, we have a chance to be out of here in under an hour. Um, liaison report. I'll start with Don. I have nothing to say. What was that? Nothing. Oh. Okay. Gordon. Um, a few words about the Affordable Housing Trust. Um, they've been a little bit held up on moving forward with the Red Acre parcel because um, they had to renew a contract for their um, for their uh, architect, um, and so that is proceeding um, forward, and then we'll be able to move forward again. Um, the Affordable Housing Trust has some interest in the High Rock Church, and, um, which could apparently um, it would be somewhat easily adapted um, as a group home. That would be the least uh, complicated um, renovation, apparently. Um, so they might want to um, explore that on those those uh, residences or those rooms would all count as um, affordable units. So that's sort of an interesting um, approach. Um, that's it. I should have let you go, but now I'm glad I didn't because I want to, because you reminded me of something I wanted to say. Um, so I'm on the library building committee <coughs> There's a meeting coming up, but the library is also interested in High Rock Church. And Don and Tom, I'm assuming you know the High Rock Church is for sale mm -hmm. and is offered, has made it's it over public to, knowledge for to the town, and it's a very reasonable price. Just something to think about. I'm starting to get concerned. Me individually looking at it. Yeah, you individually. Okay. Just want to um, make sure. You're not out the door yet, buddy. You still got it. <laughs> um, you still have to listen to the chairman's concerns. <laughs> yeah. I still need your advice. Um, I'm starting to get concerned, and I want to hear if you agree with this, Ms. Fresha, in particular, that it's different town departments getting interested in this piece of property. Everyone's got some very good, you know, looked at in isolation. Every idea seems very good. From what I understand, the price of the property itself is something you just can't walk away from. And it's starting to remind me a lot of the beginning of the fire station council on age or, or, or the community center library debate where everybody ran off in their separate directions. And that turned out to be a mistake. It took us two, three years to figure that out. And I remember the Board of Selectmen, which I was on, consciously made the decision to let everybody run off. And that mm -hmm. turned out to be a mistake. It took us about three years to rein that in and force, for lack of a better word, some cooperation. I don't know how to do that here. It seems a little early. But I'm just getting a little nervous about that. Is that valid? Sure. I mean, I just want everybody to start talking to each other. I don't know what the ultimate resolution is, but I'm not looking forward to hearing four competing proposals. Well, <coughs> we have some comments. Yes. I was going to say that our solution back then is I chaired what was called the Oversight Committee, and we took all the competing interests and needs and filtered them through us, and we made a recommendation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, so I thought it was a great start that. Um, when uh, we had a site visit out at the church, um, then immediately um, all the people that could, could go to that came back here and convened in a room and, and, and spoke collaboratively. And each person expressed mm -hmm. whether they were interested or not, representing uh, the recreation department, the library, um, the affordable housing trust. Um, and we had talked about you know, the next step being to get an appraisal, which I think is underway at this point. Um, but the Recreation Department and the library were speaking collaboratively about perhaps jointly using the building. And um, it seemed at that moment that they weren't, that people weren't going off in separate directions. And I, I think starting that way gives us the opportunity to continue a collaborative conversation. Just to 
Yes, you're right. I saw that meeting. You're right. That yeah. is how it started off. Can you hold one minute? Okay. Tom, I'll chat with you. Yeah. Right. We're in the middle of the meeting. No, I'm sorry. I just want to um, get here for a minute before she left. Excuse me. Um, yeah. You're right. I saw that meeting, and that was really good at the beginning. I hope it continues. Ultimately, I guess, you know, it comes up to does it come up to us to decide how to use it? If the town buys it, I suppose it does, just as we decided what to do with the, what's now the town center park. Um, now that I'm talking it through, my, my real concern is going to town meeting with the competing proposals. That We thought at first that that was going to be a fair solution, and in theory it is, and it exactly. turned out to be a very big mistake. Um, so now that I'm talking it through, I think that's the real nub of what I don't want to do. But th that's Part enough. Of the equation ought to include if there's a real prospect of that building being in part or in whole a library, is what do we do with the current library? Right. That equation could affect the outcome. Um, thinking of future use there, so if there is the it, if it is impossible to reach accommodation for multiple uses to the satisfaction of everybody, keeping in mind that if the library were to be relocated, we would have that building. And I think part of that vote ought to include, okay, what are your thoughts about the library and what we do with it? I, I agree. Um, Tom, take us home. <coughs> um, we're, we're moving forward glacially, I'll say, with the uh, town building reno. Um, we're having some rather frank discussions right now. Um, as you know, Courtney's on that also with me. So, um, I didn't know we had two. We did. She is representing. Oh, that's right, you carried over from I, your I'm previous representation. Okay. Okay. Got it. So, we, we've got a unique perspective there. and. Um, you know, but uh, we're retrenching a little based on the information that we've got so far, and we'll probably have some more information in the not too distant future. But so, bringing up the speed a little bit is: Are you retrenching because of the historic society's decision that we don't want anything to do with it, or because of something else? Um, it's more along the lines of uh, how much price is it? It's rather pricey. So what we're doing is we're looking at what we might, you know, I'm not going to say that we won't make town meeting, but we might not because we want to, I think we want to do it right versus try to rush it through. That's one of the conversations that we've had. Um, you know, we're, we're looking at it. The preliminary price tag is rather high and we're looking at what we can do and how we might be able to get it down and what we might have to do to um, you know, uh, get additional advice, shall we say. Okay. So it's, um, it's not a lot of information, but Courtney may have a little insight there too. Just, sure. just make one small comment. Part of the reason that, I mean, the, the phase of the conversation that we're in is the very um, early stage of, of pricing, and so everything has been conservatively um, expanded as far as possible. So that so that um, now we would look at if we wanted to reduce the scope at all um, in order to um, more closely examine costs. And, and I think moving forward in the process, the costs would become more crystallized. The moment they're a little vague on purpose. Yeah. Well, any pre-designed project estimate on a building is just that. Yeah. You ha it has to be. It has to be one that you feel comfortable as represents the high end because you don't want to come up short. Right. But you have to understand that if you haven't designed something yet, you can't appropriately price it other than you know a benchmark. So, mm -hmm. and it will be high just to be safe. And I, you know, I would just say, it sounds like you're doing it, so re-examine your scope as opposed to the assumptions that go into the estimates because yet 
the assumptions may get blown out of the water when they actually start doing the work. You don't want to have to go back to town meeting. I think the difficulty there is that I believe most of what will be for the scope of construction is to bring it up to code. I mean, there isn't. it's not as though you're adding an addition to it. It's not as though you're going, going to structurally change most of what's in there. I mean, you have the main floor and the rest of it. So what you need to do is evaluate what percentage of that total proposed scope of work is related to code. Mm -hmm. Because then, once you get in there, you've got to bring it up to code. Yep. Well, have time did, to go over that. Thank you. I appreciate it. When we, did, when we did the community center, remember, we intentionally left the roof. Right. Right. Good night. Right, Bill. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Well, you too. Thank Bill. Hope your home team wins. <laughs> um, we left the roof out of the scope. And yeah. Just to keep the price down. And then we wound up saving some money and we decided to go back to town meeting and to be perfectly honest and said we said we weren't going to do the roof but now we have some money and so now we're looking for a little bit more to do the roof do you want to do the roof and they said yes mm -hmm. um and that wound up being a good thing so okay but uh i would just say happy thanksgiving to all of you and to everybody out there and i will take a motion second uh, let's make a second of the year. We stand at the